Hey everybody, uh, John Hines here, and today we are going to talk about, uh, I have 10 more great ideas on how to follow nature to improve the fitness world. And uh, this basically came along because since I was a little boy, I've been very much connected to two things, nature and exercise and being healthy. And uh, I always look to nature to find the truth of uh, the best way to go about doing something. And oftentimes in life, what I see is that we get pulled away from what is true within ourselves. And so these 10 points really for myself are in very, very important for all of us because we are at a time in our history where I feel like we are actually getting pulled further and further away from what is true and honest and right and um, we are moving towards a, a world that is more disconnected from ourselves. And what I mean by that is that people that are connected to the appearance of things, people that are just connected to making money, people that are just connected to significance in some manner, whether it's their own ego and how they look or what they drive or who they hang out with and things like that. And what nature does, nature doesn't do that at all. Nature is about connecting to themselves by, by living in the moment. Nature is about connecting to others in their pack or their tribe or whatever they are. And, and nature is about connecting to the planet. And con the connecting to yourself is important. The connecting to others socially is very important in a positive manner. And connecting to the planet is extremely important because what we have been doing is is doing a slight downward slide over the last you know hundred years or so since industrialization has really taken over the world. So what I try and do is I, is I really try and live my life as connected to uh, nature as possible. I try and really when I move, I try and move as naturally as possible. When I interact with other people, I try and be there, I try and listen, and I try and help them to raise themselves to a higher place. And with the planet, I, I, I honestly try to do all that I can to make this planet a better place. I gave my car away over 10 years ago. I ride my bike everywhere. I, I recycle everything that I possibly can. These are, might be small things, but to me, it's what I can do to help the planet. We are also the only plant-based gym in the world. You know, we have monkey bar gyms all over the world, and that's a very big way to help people and planet and make a positive impact on the world. So this is my way to connect with nature and live in what I feel is more like a, a real, true, from the spirit, from the heart uh, life. And uh, so when sometimes we get caught and... I do, we all do, where we're, we're caught up in the appearance of something or how your guns look or, or the car that you drive and stuff like that. It happens to all of us. And all I want these 10 ideals to do is maybe help you, maybe in one or two of them, or if you can go to more of them, they will help you to move more towards connecting to yourself. And if you connect more to yourself, you will connect more to others on a real basis, and then you will connect more to the planet on a real basis. And that is literally what we're trying to all do, right? I mean, we're trying to lift ourselves and others to a higher level. So uh, here's my 10 big ways, big ideas on how to follow nature to improve the fitness world. The first one is uh, nature strengthens self-reliance. Uh, in nature, you cannot be dependent on something else. You, you must be self-reliant and also in a group format, in a social setting, you have to carry your weight. And, and these are truths that are in nature. And whether a, an animal lives on its own or in a pack, they got to do the, they got to do one or both of these all the time. Otherwise, they will cease to survive. And in our world, we have created dependencies. You know, we sometimes we use machines. Uh, we have created dependencies on drugs you know, to make us feel better. We have de created dependencies on doctors and others instead of looking into ourselves to find the answer to curing ourselves, whether it's mentally, spiritually, or physically. And so that's the first thing. I look to nature 
They're not about that. They must learn how to deal with things themselves and work in a social structure in a positive manner. And if you look at anything, nothing thrives in isolation. And that's one truth that that you look at nature and you look at a single cell, nothing thrives in isolation. And yet us humans, we try and go that way, but that's not a long-term success plan. So the first one, strengthen strengthen self-reliance. The second one is train as we play. In nature, if you've ever seen little puppies, little cats, what do they do right off the bat? They start wrestling, chasing each other, and they run, they jump, they crawl, they climb. You look at cats, dogs, any animal, they do this. What are they doing? They are training to survive by their working their reactions, they're working on all their movement skills. So why should it be any different for us humans? It shouldn't be. When we're little kids on the playground, that's what we do. We play, we throw, we catch, we run, react, we chase, we climb things to get away from our friends or to climb after them. We crawl on our hands and feet or maybe just our hands and stuff. It is how we play and how we develop our movement skills. But somewhere along the line, I don't know why, I think it had a little bit to do with making money. Uh, We started to move away from that, recesses got cut, and people started moving their kids into play a sport, sports paid money, and things like that. And so all I'm trying to say is, if you want to reconnect and really feel awesome in your heart and your spirit and move with fluidity and feel really great, think back to when you were a little kid and what you did. You, you ran, you jumped, you crawled, you climbed. Those are the basics to movement happiness. Movement happiness is not to be found on a pec deck, a bicep curl machine, a leg extension machine. That's not where you'll connect to your spirit. You'll connect to your spirit by interacting with movements that we did when we were kids and interacting with others as we did when we were kids. Okay, so that is train as we play. The third one is, together we are strong. Uh, When I was young, I used to read about all different types of philosophies and great people. And Malcolm X made a really great statement uh, when he was trying to gather support to to stand up, to, to let black people know to stand up, to stand strong together. And so he said, individually, We are weak like the fingers, but together we are strong like the fist. And I look at it the same way with our bodies, our minds, and work interacting with people and with the planet. Individually, like I said earlier, nothing thrives by itself. The body and muscles in isolation, it doesn't build a whole strong body. So just in the body, we want to use all our muscles to to do movements because that connects the entire body together. It brings more strength to the body, which gives more strength to whatever movement or performance that you're doing. That's one. Um, Interacting with other people socially. It is a fact that if I am working out with you or vice versa, or you're working out with somebody else, if I'm sitting there and I'm talking to you, come on, Susie, let's go, let's go. Or I'm just counting, I'm saying five, six, come on, Susie, you can do it. 30%, 30%, here we go, 30% greater performance results when you work with another person. That's huge. So think about that. If, if you work out by yourself versus working out with another person that is at your level or slightly above your level, and they're going to help pull you up to a higher level, that is why together we are strong. And then also working with anything that works with the planet and doing things the right way together, even with the foods that we eat. If you eat foods from the earth, you know, that is combining, you know, with its whole foods instead of isolated foods. That's much stronger. Okay, point number four, eat simple and strong to live in balance. In nature, all animals eat to their nature. They don't eat outside of what is natural for them. So primates, for example, they don't eat just meat. They eat 95 to 97% plants. 
predator type animals like wolves, cats, they eat mostly meats. If you look at animals that are generally prey type animals, you might see animals like even buffaloes, elephants, chickens, fish, things like that. Or not so much fish because there's predators in there as well. But uh, if you look at mostly prey animals, it's all plants. That is their nature. We're primates. Our nature and the way our system is made up, our intestines, the acids in our mouth, our teeth, our lack of fangs and stuff like that, that puts us in the category of primates. And primates, what is most natural for us, is a plant-based nutrition plant, which is about 90% plants, 10% what else, whatever else that fits your life. And most primates in the wild, chimpanzees, I think uh, I've read that they eat about 95% plants and they eat about 5% meats. Chimpanzees are predatorial and sometimes when they kill another uh, chimp, they'll eat it. Uh, so, and all other primates, they eat mostly their meats come from eating bugs and stuff like that. All other primates, they're eating about 3% of their diet comes from bugs. The rest comes from plants. So that is eating simple and strong to your nature. That is eating in balance. That is what does your body the best. Another part that I like to say about that is some simple rules. If you want to be in balance, you follow these rules for your nutrition along with eating plant strong foods. Eat only when you're hungry. No animal on the planet just eats because they feel like it. No lion goes out and kills just because they want to, they feel like having an antelope or something. They only hunt when they're hungry. Other than that, you see what lions do when you watch the movies on TV. They're sleeping all the time or they're chilling or they're making more lions. One of those things is happening. <laughs> so uh, that is step number one. That's important. Eat only when hungry. Second thing that all animals do as well is they only eat until they're satisfied. If you eat more food than just being satisfied, you put, your, you put yourself in a compromised position. One is you can't run if you have to run, if, if, if escape is required. And for the prey animals, they definitely cannot gorge themselves. A boa constrictor, they gorge themselves sometimes. That's a, one example of a predator animal that does that. But most of the times, cats, dog type animals, they generally never overeat. If you eat just when you're hungry and you eat only till satisfied, you will have greater health. Uh, your body will feel, your, your body will digest the foods easily. You'll feel good energy. You won't be late, uh, you know, stressed and, and feel like lethargic because you got too much food in your body to digest. So if we do it in balance where we're hungry and we eat just enough, we're hungry, we eat just enough, we keep this up all the time, your body will find a balance of that and you will, the result of it will be you will be lean and you will have great energy. If we do too much of the eating, you will be fat and you will decrease your energy because it's spending most of the time just breaking down those foods and it can't do a lot of that so it stores a lot of this as fat. So in simple terms, eat when hungry, eat only until satisfied and the last one, drink a lot of water. If you follow those rules, you're going to do yourself really well and you're going to feel like you are unbalanced. And that's what we're all trying to strive for, right? To feel really great. So the next point is, it, I love this one, is nature lets nature heal oneself. Uh, in nature, if they, if they don't feel well, they stop eating. In nature, if, like, uh, if your cat is feeling low on vitamins and minerals, sometimes you'll see a cat go and eat some grass. They'll do what their body is asking. And, but it, with us, of course, instead, we, we overeat. We, we get dependent on drugs and pills and stuff like that instead of allowing our body to cleanse itself, to heal itself. Perfect example is, when a person goes on a fast, they are literally trying to get all the toxins out of their body. First day or two might be a little bit hard, but after a couple of days, all of a sudden you start to feel amazing energy. 
you start to feel very peaceful. And it's because you're getting, you're releasing all those toxins, you're getting them out of your body, and you're letting your body work with what it has. And it's trying to streamline the body so that it can work more efficiently. That is letting nature heal itself. And that's a huge one for us. Get off drugs, get off pills, listen to your body, let it heal itself, and you will do yourself and the world a greater good, big time. The sixth point is nature is 110% about function over fashion. Their goal is always towards perfecting survival skills and not developing the ego. And now, ego or appearance is being, uh, of being healthy does not ensure survival. So if, if it push came to shove, the, the fitness world people, the bodybuilders, if they had to run a marathon, they might be in trouble right there. You know, anybody that has built up a body that is about appearance for a sport, which a bodybuilding is, and I'm not, I'm not trying to knock it, it's a sport, but for function, for survival, it, it's not the best way to go. Because what that sport does, it's all about the appearance of fitness. But um, many times, a person can get so caught up in their appearance that mentally, physically, and spiritually, they're disconnected to really being functional in life uh, in all three aspects. You know, mentally, their, their whole focus is on themselves and what they look like. That's not healthy for interacting with anybody else because you're all about your ego and you don't really tend to care about other people. Physically, they are, again, they're all about the appearance. And so can they literally, if they had to run 10, 15 miles, could they do that? If they had to have the mobility to do something else, could they do that? Maybe not. Because a body built up in that way for the sport might not be so functional to do all types of activities. And then spirit-wise, and if you're spiritual or not or religious or whatever, I'm, I'm just talking about your gut here, your heart, what sits inside of you. If you are literally about appearance and about your ego and, and about your car and just about what you look like and stuff like that all the time, then you're not going to really be connected to yourself. Because in yourself, if you really sit and look at it, you will think, I, I love serving out and helping others and helping people and planet to become better. And you cannot deny that. If, you're, if you really are, are saying back to me right now, no, my goal is to have the most awesome six pack and the biggest guns on the planet, then I just ask you to, to sit down and really look yourself in the mirror and, and ask yourself, is this truly what I want to do? Is just be about the appearance of it. And are you truly connected to your spirit in doing what you feel is your purpose here on this planet? That is what the number six is all about. It's not about fashion. It's all about function. Animals connect to each other. They are connected to the planet because they always live in balance. If, there's, if they're slightly out of balance, nature corrects itself and brings it back to balance. So that's why I love that number six point. Number seven point is... Uh, there, this is funny. No diet quackery in nature. You don't see gorillas talking amongst each other and saying, you know what, guys, let's go eat this way. Or let's go th this way. Mostly because they're not sitting there looking at their guns or their six pack or anything and even wasting any time thinking about that. But mostly because since the time they were born, they were going towards what was right, what everybody else had followed. They'd been doing it for millions of years. You know, hundreds of thousands of years, they've been eating this way. And it suits them, and it sits well with them, and it works. It gives them the energy. But their animals are so connected, they eat the foods just enough that gives them the right energy. But they also listen. They sleep when tired, and, and they do all the things by listening to their gut, their heart. You know, that puts them in balance at all times. As humans, we are constantly following the next best thing, which is basically diet quackery. My friend John Allen Mullenhauer told me about this a long time ago, and he said anytime uh, a group of people says, no, this is how you're supposed to eat, it's quackery. 
If they say you can never do this and you must always stay within these guidelines, it's quackery. Because quackery is you have to fit it into this exact, this is it. This is how you eat. You don't go outside of that. Uh, you can look at almost any diet that's out there, even vegans, vegetarians. If you say you must eat this way, paleo, vegans, vegetarians, pure meat eaters, pure fruitarians, all of that is, you can look at it, it's quackery. Why, why is eating plant-based different and it's not quackery? Because it, the goal, and why we're primates, and the goal of it to make us as healthy as possible and also make the planet as healthy as possible and to eat what, with what is our nature, like other primates, which is in, in the 90 percentages, 95% about plants, to do that, you're going to eat plant-based. We just call it that. But it is whatever is your path. If you eat, let's say, 50% plants today and 50% chicken, for whatever reason, if you start to move towards maybe 80% now, you're eating plants and 20% chicken or whatever, that's your version of plant-based. That's healthier for you. That's healthier for the planet. doesn't say you can't have more than 10% chicken. It doesn't say I'm better than you because I eat 100% vegetables. The judgment is out the window. We don't need that anymore where people are saying, I'm better than you because I eat this way. It's your path. It's my path. I eat what, what makes me feel good. But if I can eat that in a way that is close to what my, what my cousins, basically all primates eat, if I can eat in a way that does the world and myself a common good and it's non-judgmental towards anybody else because it's my path, but it's generally mostly plants, great. That's awesome. I'm doing myself and everybody a world of good. That's plant-based. It's not strict that you have to eat this and you can never have this. If, you, if I want to go have a pizza with cow's milk on it for cheese, I can do that. I'm not going to get hung up on it. And I, and I don't want to sit here and judge somebody else that does that. We're all doing our best here. And I don't want to him anybody's ha. So we, if we all can just see that and stop judging each other for our nutritional quackery, basically, and just try and find your own path that does you good and that does the planet good, man, that's awesome. So that's enough on number seven. All right. Number eight, get outside and do what comes naturally. If you did that, we'd all play. We'd all just instinctively, you know, maybe run, we'd throw a ball and uh, we'd interact with one another. We'd use our bodies and our minds to challenge each other through movement skills, to heighten our level of skills and to heighten those around us individually and through our interactions with others. And this is, this is beautiful, it's natural and just the way how all people and how, how all beings develop. Like I was saying earlier, for some reason, we stopped doing that. So uh, we no longer have need for any fitness tools that doesn't functionally aid us in uh, our training or our evolution of movement. Uh, skills that, for example, you might say, well, John, you invent a lot of tools. Yes, yeah, true. Every single tool that I developed is made to be used in conjunction with a full body movement. The power wheel, for example, it assists crawling. It makes crawling more challenging to develop more core and full body connection. The Jungle Gym XT, that's a full body workout tool that can help you move your entire body. So those are examples of tools that work within full body type movements. Can you play on those tools? Hell yeah. You can have a good time doing movements that are natural and instinctive, crawling, moving, like doing pull-ups and over and stuff, and just doing all types of different types of playful movements. You can do all of those things. Can you do those, you know, with uh, a thigh master? Eh, not really. That probably wouldn't be such a fun play type tool. Uh, an ab crunch machine? Not really. Those aren't things that come natural to us in movement. So if it was to just be as natural as possible, we'd all get outside and do it as natural, and that is we'd play. And that is what my monkey bar gym is all about, getting us back to playing. And the great, the fun thing is when you see people come in, I, I see it all the time, people come into the gym and they're real rigid at first, 
and then you get them to open it up and all of a sudden they start smiling and they're crawling and stuff like that and, they, and you hear it all the time i haven't had this much fun since i was a little kid playing on the playground and that's beautiful and that connection with other people is priceless so the next point number nine actively align daily nature uh that that's just a simple thing that we all can do nature does not do static stretching nature does the opposite they actively align every single day and what i mean by that is we all do it also like for example when you yawn like that that's active if i was to grab some bar or something with my arm and then pull it back like somebody pulled my arm back like this that's a static stretch and that is that's not natural so in nature all animals and this is something you should know it's a side note we are the only species on the entire planet that static stretches. Something's not right there. If you think about it, why does nature not do static stretching? Because it doesn't balance the body. Active, like a yawn, something like that. The muscles on my back are contracting and through what's called reciprocal inhibition, the opposite muscles of contracting muscles have to relax. That is how you actively open up the body. And what we do, we do what's called Aishin's Yoga. And um, it's active alignment. And it works like nothing else because it's actively engaging those weak links of the body. Uh, somewhere along the line, I don't know when it was, but it was probably about the time when we started developing machines, we started doing static stretching. And... Uh, it, it just does not work because it can lead to overstretching a joint. And if you think about the people that do the most static stretching, it's martial artists and gymnasts. And those are the two groups that have the most hip injuries because they have loose, loose joints. Hip, uh, it's called joint laxity. And that's what leads to misalignments in the joints when they do have pressure on the joint. And that's what leads to tears and stuff like that. And so what we want is by actively aligning the body, you develop stability and you develop mobility. When you do that in balance, you get a body that is pain free, well aligned and ready to perform any activity that you can think of. And now for the 10th point, heal naturally through good foods and healthy movement. This is just a final generalizing point here Instead of eating plant-strong foods and are doing simple activation of weak links, doctors and health professionals, they sell and promote pills, drugs, contraptions. And instead of actually simple solutions like moving better and eating better, that, wow, that, it's like a big concept there to do those things. And instead of doing those things, they're about the money. And what I'm talking about here with you, all of it's free. You can move naturally anywhere you are right now. You can do the restorative movements, the active alignment anywhere that you want. Just have to learn a little bit of Aishin Yoga, and that's real simple. And then the third thing, eating plant-based, it's simple. Eat just whole foods. Eat, uh, Joel Furman has a great term called G-bombs, and the G stands for greens. The B is beans. The O is onions. The M is mushrooms, the B is berries, and the last S is seeds, which also represents nuts and raw, raw nuts and stuff like that. But if you eat what's called G-bombs, sprinkle in a little about of what other, other foods that you want occasionally, that's an extremely healthy way to eat, especially if you follow the eat when hungry, eat only till satisfied, and drink a, water, a lot of water. If you follow those things, you move daily, you do active alignment daily, you're going to be feeling amazing. And all three of those things, that's what nature gives us. That's what we, we want. Our nature is to do all three of those things. So I'm going to just sum it up all now in the big picture. What we are doing works. It can be improved, though. My suggestions are to follow what has worked for millions of years, nature. Follow her lead in the ways she moves, eats, and balances. Without our interference, she works in magnificent glory. 
And you can see that any time that you go to a national park, it's, it's just profoundly beautiful. But we, we have proven we are not walking a good path through historical high records of sickness, disease, mental and physical pain. By returning to what is natural and fun, we can reverse this and build a world of health and happiness that coexists with nature. And that is all I'm trying to do, and that is all we are trying to spread at the Monkey Bar Gym. I hope this inspires you in some way today to help yourself and thus others around you to strengthen your circle and make a bigger splash in your pond. Okay? Have a great one, guys. Peace.